My name is Riley Keen. I'm the CEO of Caraporter LLC. We're a company that manufactures intelligent keyboards. And this video is a part of a series where I react to videos made by our customers. The first video I'm going to react to is by John D. St. Germain. I'm going to go back in time to his first review that he's ever posted. And I did watch this when it came out a year ago, but for the most part, this is a pretty blind reaction. Let's get right into it. Hi, Joel. Uh, today, I'd like to give you all a review of the Caracorder. Um, so let's get right into it. So Caracorder.com, uh, it's this kind of crazy looking keyboard device that um, allows you to do, quote unquote, type at the speed of thought. Um, so I wanted to give an overall review of this because there's not many reviews out there. I think that's due to the product being fairly new. Um, before I give my review, I just want to quickly give you a little bit of background about me and how I am as a typist. So on a QWERTY keyboard, uh, I'll show you my 10 fast fingers. I type around, you know, 128, 29 average words per minute over these tests. You can see the highest here I've ever recorded is 141. On monkey type for my 15 seconds, 159 is my highest at 100% accuracy. So I would say I'm an overall very fast typist compared to most people. Uh, so take that into consideration when you are hearing my review about a device that lets you type at speed of thought. Um, so uh, let's talk about it. So my overall recommendation, uh, I am six days into using the Caracorder. Contrast that with my 21, 22 years of typing on a query based keyboard. Um, and I would say that I absolutely recommend this device. Now, I have not broken my query typing speed on this device. I'm still learning the keys. I'm still learning how to use it. I, I think the highest that I've typed so far is 52 words per minute uh, on Launchpad, which is Caracorder's um, uh, training software from their website. Um, so I'm definitely not, I have not beaten my words per minute on QWERTY. However, I can clearly see the potential. Sorry, my dog is whimpering in the background. I can clearly see the potential um, for this device. And so I wanted to just go into a few more specifics about it. Um, so yeah, so let's let's talk about it. So the, the device itself, um, you know, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's got this USB-C uh, plug right here. I took that out once um, as I was moving it around. Putting it back into here was a little difficult to, uh, to get the right angle. Um, so I don't know that I would do it again unless I had it to. It comes with this bar in the middle that connects the two halves. You can take the four Phillips screws out and remove this bar to have the two pieces um, spread apart. They're connected by these three and a half millimeter, it looks like. Um, audio cable or whatever you call that cable is I'm not not sure uh, that came with it and this can spread apart so you can do that I did that at first but I found that I liked to keep the static orientation of the switches relative to the um, the device so speaking about the switches um, so the way this thing works and I'm not sure if it's easy to see but these are each five-way tactile switches. Um, so there's a north, south, west, east, and a, you can press it down. Um, and that lets you type letters. Um, so the device comes with a reference guide that shows what each of those letters do. Let's see if I can get this up. It's kind of hard to see. And this is probably uh, the wrong orientation. I should have uh, flipped my camera for you. But... Um, so it comes with that. It tells you what those are. There you go. Now you can probably see it a little better. So, you know, each of these switches operates in that way. The switches themselves, oh lordy, sorry, I do not make videos, but I'm making this review because I think it's important. Um, the switches themselves feel pretty good. They've got a nice feel to them. Um, they seem to be made out of some kind of metal, maybe aluminum and uh, they've got a nice little weight to them, and they've got a sort of satisfying click, which a lot of people that type 
like to have that feedback. Uh, so that's great. Um, I will say one thing that I found a little odd, uh, just considering the price point, was that the device itself, you can see on the camera here, their holes, you can see in and see the, the sort of circuit board. These holes to me seem way too large considering the actual movement that is needed uh, for the switches. So maybe some kind of membrane or something in there would have been a little bit nicer. Uh, but overall, you know, the device itself, I think this metal bar gives it some weight. The two. I'm going to try not to interrupt, but I'll add that we did implement a membrane since this video was created a year ago, which has helped with both the longevity of the device, um, waterproofing, dustproofing, as well as the aesthetics. Two halves feel, um, you know, a little plasticky, but overall, I, I feel pretty happy with it. I think the price point, 250 USD, um, is mostly about the value that this thing is going to give you more than, um, let's say, the build quality. That's just my opinion. So, uh, learning how to actually use this thing. So, <sighs> I will say, you get this quick reference guide. Uh, that's about it. You know, you plug the device in, you can start playing around with the switches. Um, if you go on their website, you do, or you are able to go under the more and then get started. And that will show you um, some information. Uh, it apparently the, the launchpad software used to be a download. It's no longer um, the cord manager used to also be a download. It no longer is. So things are changing pretty rapidly as they develop it. Um, so there's definitely some information here, but I would say it's a little outdated. I would say the best way to keep up to date is to go to the discord community. The creators of care recorders seem very active as well as the community there. Um, so you can definitely learn a lot. Um, as far as documentation overall, they have some videos on their YouTube, which are kind of questionable quality. They have some videos on their TikTok, which um, the creator has created various TikToks on, you know, how the device works and showing it off and, and whatnot. But um, you pretty much can't find reviews or anything of this guy. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. But um, I think it's just because it's new and getting used to this is going to take some time. So Launchpad, the tutorial, I um, the tutorial software, I guess. Um, I did a video on this. You can go check it out because it's not documented very well. You can kind of figure it out, and I kind of have with the help of some people in Discord and the creators um, explaining it. Uh, but this software is pretty nice. Uh, I like it. It's pretty slick. It lets you practice um, character entry, and then eventually you start to get into typing, uh, you know, like uh, common groupings of words. So ETH, EDA, and you can see I'm really slow still. Uh, so I'm still definitely a learner. Um, and then you get into the lexical tier, which has uh, common words. So country, near, um, for example. Um, and then you get into the corded tier, uh, which is where the fun really kind of starts. So uh, cording is really interesting. It's definitely hard for a new person, in my opinion. Um, you have to have some muscle memory and training in your hands to be able to press keys at the same time and release them. So you see there, it took me a while to be able to cord that. But there's this mode, which is really interesting, which I'll see if I can try to actually show you. But on the recorder if you cord both of the mirror keys which are the bottom or you know the south of these keys that are over here on both sides if you cord both of those at once it will turn on spurring mode and so with spurring mode um, when you go to do the chords you press basically every key once at a time until you get to the one that you see that you want and then you let go so it makes it really kind of a, a lot easier to cord the, the letters. And so I think this is going to be a great learning mode um, to, to kind of get entry. This is called spurring mode. Definitely recommend it. Uh, the creators have noted that 
you know, when you, when spurring is off, you can turn go through the GTM gener, generative text menu, maybe, uh, by yep. pressing both. And this only works for me in Word for some reason. But if you um, cord both of the alt keys on the device, you get this menu here, which is really interesting, and it's not advertised very well. Found out about it in the Discord. Um, if you go to settings here, so S, there's this press and release tolerance. You can increase these. So if I type uh, P, uh, oops, I didn't type P, I typed enter. So see, I'm still learning. Um, let's see, S, and then if I type P, then I can adjust this tolerance up. And this whole menu, how it's interacting, is pretty interesting. You know, there's no software. This is all firmware-based. So you can plug this into any computer, and this would be working. So it's kind of interesting. But anyway, so you can adjust this, and then once you like it, you can go back, get out of this menu. Um, and then that helps increase the window to type the chords. But what I found when I did that was that in doing the uh, the character entry, I got so fast in character entry that sometimes I was accidentally cording um words so i think that's why they're set a little lower at the beginning so i think the the spurring mode is going to be a good way to learn um some other notes uh just looking at all the the media that's out there i didn't realize that the chord library was just like a a finite editable set of chords um so the device my device came with 500 chords that covered the top 300 words there's a few duplicate words that you can choose whatever chord feels comfortable to learn. Um, and speaking with the creator, he's got a chord library of three, 4,000 uh, chords. And so this is up to the user to customize. I didn't realize that. I don't think that's a big ordeal because, you know, these top chord libraries or the chord library here covers the top, you know, 80% of written language. And then if you have specific language that you use in your domain, you can add and edit it. Um, which I think is really good. Uh, so this is just interesting. There's some importing features, exporting features. So in the Discord, there's some people that have exchanged tables. There's there's a guy that did a top 500, for example. I haven't really got into this too much. Uh, this software piece of the software has also been um, changing pretty rapidly. So that's a good sign. They seem to be updating it pretty often. And, you know, they're super helpful in the Discord to, to answer any questions that you may have. Um. So yeah, so I think to to wrap up, you know, I I'm a one almost 160, 15 seconds qwerty. I'm at 52 on the care quarter, six days in versus 22 years of experience. I think that speaks for itself. I think I'm gonna be blowing those numbers out of the water when I get some more practice with you. I mean, sorry, practice with this device. Um, so yeah, I I think my overall recommendation is if if you can spare the money and you want to type fast. I think this is going to be really interesting advice. I plan on giving updates uh, on how my speed is progressing. I'm kind of keeping track of it. They've just added this new feature to track track it actually in the software um, yesterday. So mine isn't accurate yet. Um, but yeah, I'll be giving updates. Hopefully I come back in two, three months, something like that. And I have some good news to, to show you guys about breaking sort of my query speeds. That would be really awesome. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know if you want to see any videos or anything about the device that I've learned, or if you have any particular questions, just let me know. Happy to respond. I'm not affiliated at all with Caracorder. Uh, I'm just a member in the discord community. Highly recommend joining that. Um, and, uh, yeah, let me know. All right, this Joel. was one of the first reviews that anybody ever made about Caracorder. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of scrub through and talk about the thoughts that I was having while he was talking. So one thing to note that makes John a very interesting case study is one, not only was he one of the first early adopters of the device, but he's a very, very fast QWERTY typist. Um, he can regularly hit speeds over 135, 140 words per minute. That's for a minute of typing uh, on the the shorter test in monkey type, let's see what he had posted here again. He's getting at 159. The average QWERTY type of speed is 40 words per minute. So this is four times faster than that. Uh, so that's one thing that is really important to note. It's really cool to see 
whenever he shows images of the website or the training software or anything, it's like, this was only a year ago. Uh, to see how far we've come since then is crazy um, to kind of go back in time. Whenever we, we see the incremental improvements every day, it doesn't always seem like a big leap. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. It's only been a year. A lot has been changed. He talks about the membranes, which I already addressed. Uh, we have since implemented the dustproof and um, water-resistant membranes, spill-resistant membrane, to help with aesthetics as well. Uh, John, you're, hopefully, you've probably figured this out by now, but your, your bar is upside down. It looks like you removed it and put it back, um, but it works either way. The, let's see. John was able to hit what I think he said 55 words per minute after six days, which is definitely on the high end, I would say, of a new user. On average, uh, it usually takes people close to, I would say, like three to five weeks, about, I usually say about a month to pass average QWERTY speed. That's 40 words per minute. Uh, so John, obviously, is a very talented typist, and that probably contributed to his ability to learn really fast. And then I also want to address that this video was before the Caracorder Lite came out. So John is only reviewing the Caracorder 1 here. John went on to um, break his all-time QWERTY speed on a Caracorder Lite after less than a month of using it. I think he increased like uh, like 50 words per minute. He went from 200 to 250 words per minute using the Lite. And then since that, he went back to using the Caracorder 1 full-time after using the light for a while. And I think he's still using the Caracorder 1 full-time and has been able to get up to those that very high, like 200 plus range as well. So go, go chat with him or see his log on Discord in the Share Your Progress section if you want to see specifically kind of his year journey. He's one of the people that have used Caracorder the device the longest. Basically all the stuff on this Get Started page has been updated since he posted this, the cord, the device man, the cord manager is now the device manager. Um, Launchpad actually, we're announcing a big change related to Launchpad uh, very soon here, maybe even this week. And then, what else? What else? What else did John talk about here? Oh, the GTM. Yeah, we don't talk about this a lot. It is a very unique feature of Caracorder that has a lot of power. We just totally revamped it, um, and. Yeah, the ability to adjust cording thresholds I think is important for new users because everybody types differently. And it's not only the speed that you type, but also the fluidity that you type. Um, so John mentioned he was getting some false cording after he had um, raised those settings to increase that threshold. Um, so some people may be a more like high staccato typist where there's a lot of separation between their keys will be more likely to pick up a, a, a chord if your settings are too high. So having that adjustability, I think, is very important because uh, everybody types differently. But the uh, the default setting is is a good starting place in Happy Medium. And then talked about the cording tier, the chord manager. Yeah, the fact that the device has a limited chord set that it comes with is um, is definitely something that people, I guess people do expect there to be more chords on the device when it arrives. Um, the whole philosophy and one of the benefits of Caracorder is that every chord library should be unique. And since this video was created, also impulse chording was introduced, which allows you to create chords like mid-sentence as you're typing. And I think that outside of the, the most common 100 words in English, which represent 50% of written English, for the most part, you there is a benefit to creating your own chords in your own library based on what, what you type. That being said, uh, there's the ability to export and import libraries. So there has been quite a bit of exchange based on the language, based on you know vocational use case. Uh, however, we are planning to offer an extended starter library. Uh, maybe we can bump it up to like 2000 to start off. Um, some people do have like passwords, and like bank information, credit card information in the core library. So please be very careful when you share your libraries. Uh, and also I do not recommend making a password that is just one chord, at least like have multiple chords together or do a chord with some characters after it. Um, especially if you're planning on sharing your library because you never know when you might just forget to delete one line. Um, yeah, so I think this was a pretty fair review, both pros and cons. I'm glad that John recommended the advice he's, and that he's remained very active in our community.
He says at the end of this video that he's not affiliated with Caracorder, which he wasn't at the time he made this. But since then, he has become part of our affiliate program. Um, so if you want to support John and his content creation, uh, there is a discount code that you can get, what, 20% off of your device and support him. So thanks, John, for the candid review. We're not a company that's actively sending our tech out to influencers to market. So when someone does feel that this is so important that they need to share it and they go through all that time and effort, it's something that we really deeply appreciate as a company. And it's, it's active people in our online community like this, which is why we've been able to make so much progress in the past year and how we're able to continuously improve in everything that we do.